The Super Smash Bros. series has become such a massive entity, and its crossovers are so famous that speculation on who will come next is easily one of the most iconic parts of the series. Not only that, wanting a character in Smash has almost become a part of people's identities. You might see Geno fans sticking together, or even just someone expressing nostalgia for a game of their childhood by wistfully longing for a character in Smash. That's why I'm here to take a dump over concepts like childhood and community and tell you what characters I don't want in Smash. But seriously, with Smash being so huge, there are many ideas that become popular about who should be added, and inevitably there are some ideas I look at and just say, nah, they can sit this one out. This guy does not need to be in Smash for one reason or another. I'll go over a few of those characters, the case for their addition, and why I think that addition should not happen in a future Smash game. Since it's likely going to be a while till we get another Super Smash Bros game, I'm sure no one will take any of these personally whatsoever. Seriously though, if you like any of these characters, there's a good chance I'll like them too, and the series they come from as well, so there's no reason to take it personally. Just hear me out here. And it goes without saying, but these are characters I actually see people requesting in Smash. If a character is here, I've seen someone saying they should be in Smash before. I'll go over five characters in total as well, and let's get into this with the first character, the Masked Man from Mother 3. Mother 3 is one of my all-time favorite RPGs. I love it. You should play it. Piracy is always morally correct. And the Masked Man is one of the characters I see requested from it the most. Maybe even the gar- Maybe even the character from Earthbound I see the most requests for. And that makes me say, really? And yes, there will be spoilers for Mother 3. I'm not gonna say a character can't be in Smash, because they spoil plot elements of a game, but uh, right off the bat, that's maybe a little bit <laughs> problematic. So, the masked man is Klaus. He is the twin brother of Lucas, who is killed near the beginning of the game, which sets forward the plot in motion. As Lucas goes on his adventure, he encounters the masked man a few times, who's actually Klaus that was brainwashed and turned evil by the main villain, Porky. Then the masked man ends up being the final boss. And in the last battle, Lucas reminds him of who he is and Klaus commits suicide. Do you see the problem? Look, I'm okay with characters who don't fully fit the cartoony tone of Smash. I like how Snake and Isabel can recreate the final battle of Final Fantasy VII on the Northern Cave. It's cool. But it feels weird to me when a character represents something so grim. When you fight the masked man, you're meant to feel devastated to the point that you don't even attack him. The final boss of Mother 3 is one of the biggest emotional gut punches in gaming history, cause you're supposed to feel devastated by how circumstances have led this to happen. Even the image of the masked man is supposed to be representative of childhood loss of innocence and suicide. Frankly, I don't think someone like that would feel appropriate for Smash at all, besides a spirit or something. Especially when Smash has overall been trying to make characters more and more like their original game appearances. Does anyone actually, like, know what this character is? Am I going insane here? The Mother Earthbound series has plenty of other characters that could be picked too. It's not like the child soldier victim of capitalism is the only character left from the series. There are party members like Paula or Kumatora, who have access to more PSI, maybe some non-PSI users like Duster or Jeff, or just weird characters like Mr. Saturn, Master Belch, or Yokuba, who could be infinitely more interesting than the Masked Man, moveset-wise and thematic-wise. Even Porky, I think he would have his own problems, but he'd be way better, and I don't understand people wanting Masked Man at all. Maybe if he had a more active role in the story, besides a villain who occasionally shows up for a fight until that emotional gut punch at the end, or like, 
a personality as a villain besides being a brainwashed child soldier, maybe then I'd get it. That's not to diss him, of course. He's, again, like, he's a brainwashed child soldier. He doesn't even speak for himself. It's kind of funny, to be honest. Like, what are people thinking here by requesting him? This next character I'm including for similar reasons in that tone is the main issue. That is Conker from the Conker series, most known for Conker's Bad Fur Day. You can probably see where I'm going here, but just hear me out. So Conker debuted as one of the characters in Diddy Kong Racing, and then the developer Rare made a spin-off just for him called Conker's Pocket Tales, which from what I get is an average Game Boy game with a cutesy squirrel mascot. Nobody wants the Conker from Diddy Kong Racing though. I mean, that would kind of be based. But the real request is Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day. And what they want him to be based on is that game. That game's whole gimmick, of course, is that it's a once kid-friendly character in an N64 game about swearing, alcohol, sex, more swearing, violence, and even more swearing. So basically, it's Banjo-Kazooie if uh, Kazooie directed the game. And the simple reason I don't want Conker is because without any of that crassness, he's literally just the same as any other mascot platformer. Not saying his gameplay is bad or anything, but the biggest part of his legacy is being M-rated. And without that, it's gone. Now yes, Smash has Snake and Bayonetta, but those are different cases because they can accurately capture the gameplay of those characters without needing M-rated stuff. The character of Snake isn't made Snake by the fact that he can smoke or something, although he is made Snake by his ass which they cut, but ignoring that for now. I just don't think you can make Conker interesting without raising this game's age rating. It's worth noting though, some people have raised the possibility of him fighting with mostly realistic weapons like chainsaws or flamethrowers, and to me, no. That just always makes him seem more bland. If Conker's in a fighting game, he would kinda need some of those moves, but I don't just think having guns and flamethrowers would be enough to make him himself. I should acknowledge Smash Remix, that's what I've been using footage from, and it's a fan-made mod of Smash 64, where Conker is one of the extra fighters. No, this is very far off from the same situation though. This is a fan mod, which deliberately has a stripped down aesthetic and very little voice acting. It's not the same as the latest AAA Smash game, which tries very, very hard to make every character so similar to their source material. I just needed to acknowledge that. And I mean, I don't want to be the guy who pits every company's characters against each other like some kind of race, but there are like three other Xbox Game Studios characters to add before Conquer. We don't need three Microsoft characters who aren't Master Chief before Master Chief. TLDR, if I can't jump off a giant pair of boobs for my up special, I don't want him. So my number three spot here goes to Chosen Undead from Dark Souls. Again, I must stress that I really like Dark Souls. These games are good and cool and fun, but I do not think their protagonists should represent the game for this simple reason by how customizable they are. Pretty much everything about a Soulsborne protagonist is hyper customizable, from their weapons to their appearance and gender to how heavy their attacks are. They would, they would basically need to make the Chosen Undead fight with one playstyle, neglecting all others, or just by having them float a shit ton of spells and weapons of various types. And that sounds awful and incoherent and just straight up not how anyone fights in this series anyway. Smash does have a good amount of characters who can vary a lot by how they customize them in their source material, including Avatar characters like Robin, Villager, or Corrin. Even characters like Joker or Cloud have a ton of customization in their source material, but Smash manages to narrow them down to one thing. And I don't think it did anything fundamentally wrong with those characters in Smash. So what's the difference between them and the Chosen Undead? Well, the way I see it, Cloud and Joker take 
inspiration from the idea of those characters rather than just their series gameplay. Cloud uses a lot of big sword moves, and Joker is focused on being flashy, even using a grappling hook before that was a thing in the games. The idea of the character of the Chosen Undead is kind of just some guy, even in the Dark Souls universe. Spoiler alert, he isn't actually the Chosen One, and he doesn't really stand out compared to everything else in Dark Souls. I, I suppose technically they could make the Chosen Undead look the way he is on the box and fight with moves based around the idea of a slow-moving, realistic knight, but it just doesn't seem that interesting to me, especially compared to Cloud and Joker, who are actual characters. And yes, this also applies to the bearer of the curse, Ashen One, Tarnished, whatever the Demon Souls protagonist is named. The Hunter from Bloodborne and uh, Sekiro from Sekiro might be a different story though, but I do think this could be applied to a lot of different heavily customizable RPG protagonists as well. I'm sure you can make the same argument to say Dovahkiin or something should be in Smash. I don't know. I haven't played Skyrim. If from Eh, Scott the Waz has already done this. Soft is to be represented in Smash. I think it should be through some iconic boss or NPC who can stick mostly to one playstyle. So maybe someone like Solaire, Gwyn, or Artorias, rather than just the Protag. Really, I wouldn't have as big an issue with the Chosen Undead being in if it weren't for these characters already being really interesting ideas for fighting games. Smash fans are uh, already weirdly allergic to the idea of someone other than a game's protagonist getting in before the protagonist, but that's a way bigger topic than I'm willing to discuss now. My next character is again, sort of a more generic RPG protagonist. It's Chris from Deltarune. This isn't Frisk. I would be mostly fine with Frisk Undertale being in Smash, even if Undertale would have some better choices, but that's besides the point. So my problem with Chris is that no matter what you make their moveset, it's basically going to completely change once a new Deltarune chapter comes out and something new is brought to the table, completely altering the character and their moveset. Deltarune is an incomplete game. It's still in development, and for all we know, a bunch of Deltarune chapters could drop and make a Smash character feel obsolete. People often suggest using members of the fun gang, but what if a character has a change at one point and uses different attacks eventually? Or another character like Noel gets introduced, who probably should be in a moveset like that, but isn't. Heck, I had a concept for Susie being the main controllable character back when only Chapter 1 existed, since she attacks much more than Chris and Rossi, and actually really has the character arc in that first chapter. But now that she takes a bit more of a backseat in Chapter 2, I'm uh, more unsure of this, and if Susie were added back then, I definitely would think it's something they should reconsider. Well, that's untrue actually. Because it's possible to have Chris fight on their own with weapons and attacks from Deltarune, no fun gang included. Congratulations, you just made a less interesting Frisk. There's just not that much interesting stuff I think Chris could do on their own. And even then, if you're looking at the stuff in Deltarune, I think Chris could have a massive change that would make Smash age like milk. Plus, like, do you guys actually fight in Deltarune? I've always associated Susie with the fighting, but I always just try to spare enemies in Deltarune as Chris, because it's just more fun to me that way, like what I mentioned with Susie before. To be clear, I 100% understand if you don't agree with me here and simply just don't see it as a problem, but we can agree to disagree at that point. At the very least, I think it's a point against the character that shows there are quite a lot better choices from both Undertale and Deltarune. I also am realizing this just now, you could make the case for this being the same as like a TV show character, right? I'm not going to say that you can't add like Goku to a jump game if it's only in like season one of Dragon Ball Z, right? 
but I think there's something very different about Chris to just any TV show. Obviously, like, TV show is a very general thing. Just like any incomplete story that's very clearly going to have an end goal. I think Chris is like... You can get a sense that something really big is being hidden about them, and something really big is going to change once we get to the finale of Delta Room. And if you don't think that's reason enough to not to just like wait, sit it out for now until Delta Room gets finished, that's perfectly reasonable. I just think that since Chris is going to be such a different character in the future, we should probably sit out them being in any crossovers like this. So for this video, I've been trying to keep it to just characters people actually want and have asked for in Smash. So I'm technically cheating a little with this one, because this is a character the vast majority of Smash fans probably wants to stay the hell away from this game, because she's a Fire Emblem character. But you know, there's still a surprising amount of people who are okay with another Fire Emblem character in Smash. And what I'm talking about specifically is the idea of this character being one of the few Fire Emblem characters if there is cuts in a sequel. It's an idea I've actually seen a lot, and I'm talking about Anna. Anna debuted back in the first Fire Emblem on NES, and has become a recurring character ever since as a merchant selling all sorts of stuff. She's pretty popular, and if Smash does absolutely positively have to get another Fire Emblem character, I guess she wouldn't be that bad of an addition. But there's still this weird narrative that the character is a mascot of the series, and no? She's not really used in any marketing, and I don't really get why people shoehorn her into that role of a face for the series. The idea she's a mascot is a big part of the reason I see her suggested to be among the few Fire Emblem characters in a sequel alongside a couple protagonists. I just don't think she's as important as people say she is. At least not enough for her to be the, one of the few Fire Emblem characters alongside a couple others. I even see some radicals say she should be the only Fire Emblem character. I'll admit it's kinda petty, but when people say that so many times and have argued for her being in Smash because of it, it just makes me want her way less. She's a recurring merchant character. She could be in Smash, sure, but I don't get why people think she's that important. Importance isn't the only factor for a Smash fighter though, and I see quite a lot of people suggesting movesets for her which don't really convince me of her merits as a fighter to be honest. I see the idea of her using all sorts of weapons from throughout the series, and I guess that could work, but that's kind of already covered by Byleth and short of just randomly adding coins or money bags to her moveset, I don't really see much that she would actually fight with that's unique to her. Then I see the idea of her like summoning Fire Emblem characters or some weird thing, and man, this is just a merchant girl, what are we doing? She even fights in three houses, and yeah, she's a perfectly fine unit. I just think people shoehorn in a bunch of crazy, fanciful movesets for her because she's this mascot character, and I don't really see them working that well. You know, I guess, maybe, she probably could be a, one of a few Fire Emblem characters in the next game. Sure, I will concede that. But I think some of the ideas for her are just a little too wacky. And that's really what I'm trying to say here. She's probably the characters out of all these I think could work in Smash the most, which is why I'm putting her here at number 5. It's the one I have the most strictly personal reasons for not wanting as much, but I still think there are some legitimate points here. And hey, it still means it's a character I don't want in Smash. It still technically fits the title of this video. So there we go, 
five characters I do not want in Super Smash Bros. Who some, in fact, do want in Super Smash Bros. sometimes. Admittedly, the reasoning kind of gets weaker and weaker as we go, but whatever. I do really like how Super Smash Bros. is able to make so many fandoms happy, and so many people whose favorite characters can be added to this game. And most of the time when I see an idea for Smash, I'll probably like it. But I do think it's only natural to have some reservations about certain characters. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. If there are any characters you don't want, I guess... Don't, just... You know, just don't be an asshole about it, please, god. Actually, funnily enough, in research for this video, I found that a lot of Smash fans can be very toxic about this sort of thing, and a lot of fans just don't know which characters are actually requested. I scoured old GameFAQs lists of characters you don't want in Smash, and everyone's just listing out, like, Goku. Come on. And most of it is just people complaining about those kids liking Fortnite, or just assuming characters like Waluigi are only wanted in for the memes. Look, I want Waluigi in for non-meme related reasons, okay? So, uh, don't be an asshole, please. I'm just hoping that videos like these can actually start a discussion about these sorts of things which aren't really awful and terrible that no one wants to be a part of. So yeah, hopefully you can help me here. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. And hey, I didn't put Waluigi, Gino, and Bandana D on here, so no getting mad at me.